Hi, I'm Jack. Welcome back to my channel and a new video. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the original Saw from 2004 from first-time director James Wan. And the story here is about these two guys who wake up in this bathroom with no memory of how they got there. They're both chained to pipes in the room. And as the story goes through, they're starting to piece together why they might be there or how they're possibly going to escape using various clues that have been left for them. So with us getting a new Saw entry in the franchise next week, I thought this would be a great time for us to go back and revisit the original. And this is one that I saw as a teenager when it came out, when the Saw franchise was at the height of its popularity. You know, it made a ton of money. It was a massive product at the time. And I was obsessed with this first film. You know, I loved it. I showed it to everyone I knew. I was always talking about it. And I obviously was blind to some of the flaws of this film at the time because it's one that over the years, the more and more I've seen it, I can start to definitely see some of the problems that people were talking about uh, with this first film. And don't get me wrong, it's still one that I really enjoy. I have, I've probably seen it upwards of 10 to 15 times and I, I really do still enjoy it, but definitely watching it now, I can see a lot of the flaws. But one thing I'll say about that is I think I tend to be harder on a film, especially critiquing it when, you know, when it's got a two to three hundred million budget and, you know, you've got a great cast, it's got all the time in the world to film it. But when it just comes across as uninspired, boring and with nothing really, uh, nothing really for the audience to take from it, I go harder on a film like that because I feel like they had all of the resources they needed to make a great film. Uh, whereas the case with Saw is this is basically like a student film. You know, these James Wan and Leigh now they were first time filmmakers. They were working on an extremely limited budget. And they say that some say their final budget was actually less than a million to film this. They did it in about three weeks. Uh, so they were obviously limited on the amount of takes they could get. And they were just basically piecing bits together afterwards to make the best thing they could. So I think when you watch this film from that perspective, it really is quite impressive. You know, I think because as well, James Wan, now obviously he's known for being a massive director. You know, he's done stuff in the DCEU. He's done billion dollar films. So it's kind of difficult to watch this now, knowing where James Wan eventually made it to, whereas when back here, he was basically a no one. He was just a first time filmmaker who wrote a script and, and gave it his best shot. And obviously uh, it was a huge financial success. So I think if you can watch it through the lens that this was a first time film, it's a pretty damn impressive project to come out with. So again, I can see the flaws with it now and we'll get into that, but I will start off with what I love about the original Saw. The main thing I love about Saw is just the way it sets up this mystery. It's a very intriguing story and the way it starts to unfold through these various clues and all of these twists and turns just keeps you absolutely 100% engaged all the way through the runtime of this. So when you have Adam first waking up, you know, the film doesn't mess about it, just dives straight into it. The opening shot is Adam waking up in this bath, no clue what's going on. He's completely disoriented and just sees there's another guy in the bathroom also chained to this pipe in the same situation in him. And you've got this guy lying on the floor who seemingly shot himself. And we also, as the audience at this point, have no clue what is going on. So I just kind of love going along the journey with these characters, just trying to piece together what the hell is going on. And I think as well, just the amount of twists and turns the film throws at you that genuinely do surprise you. They are really unpredictable and you don't see them coming. And I think that just makes it for a very exciting watch. I mean, I'm not going to give uh, spoilers of that final twist here, just, just in case anyone hasn't seen it. I know it's a 20-year-old film, but uh, that final twist really shocked me. I, I had no idea that was coming the first time I saw this. So when people say they saw that coming, I find that so hard to believe, to be honest. I genuinely believe that's one of the most shocking twists in a horror film that I've ever seen. So I always absolutely loved that. And even watching this again now, of course, knowing it's coming, I, I can't help but smile seeing that final sequence play, uh, playing out because it just takes me back to when I was young watching that and just being so shocked the first time <laughs> that you see that, that final twist. So there's things like that in the film that just 
keep me undeniably engaged throughout the whole runtime of this. I do really like as well the interactions between Dr. Gordon and Adam uh, as this as this story is unfolding. And I just feel like because of the tension between them, because they're quite different people and they don't know whether to trust each other and they're both quite awkward and difficult people. So, you know, there's a lot of arguments and disputes that come between them, even though they're in some way trying to work together to get out of this situation. You can still feel that kind of tension rising between these two characters. And I love how you feel differently about them as the story goes on. There's moments where you kind of hate both of them and there's moments where you really sympathise with these characters as well. So I do think it's one thing that people have always criticised the characters here and also namely the acting of, um, you know, Dr. Gordon and Adam by Leigh Whannell and Carrie Elwes. But I've never been as critical on that. I've always thought these characters were uh, interesting a lot, enough to go along with on this story. And, you know, to be honest, even with the acting, I feel like people have jumped on the bandwagon a little bit, to be honest, with these two actors. You know, Leigh Whannell was a first-time a first time actor, and to me, he doesn't feel any different than what's expected in any other low-budget horror film, to be honest. You know, this isn't Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight, I get that. Uh, but I really didn't find his performance that offensive. And, you know, you've got Carrie, Carrie Elwes, and, OK, he's a little bit over the top in some scenes, but... You know, I think otherwise he's quite a good actor in, in general. So, you know, you could easily put this down to them not having enough time to do enough takes and whatnot. And maybe some of it is over the top, as I've said. But I've never quite found those performances to be as bad as some people make out. When I watch this even now, I'm fairly convinced by the characters and I'm very happy to go along and watch the interactions with these two characters play out. I do just like as well how you can really feel the desperation of these two characters, especially towards the end when they start to really realise the gravity of their situation and they're just, yeah, their desperation and trying to get out and what in the end they're willing to do uh, to, to get themselves out. Oh, you really do start to feel it. And it is quite a cruel film and that will probably be a negative for some people. I know this film has been always associated as kind of starting off that trend for the sort of torture porn films and I don't really think it's fair to attribute that to this film because it's really the later sequels that went really over the top with the torture and the gore and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't really in this first film but uh, there is definitely a very mean-spirited feeling that goes through this film and it is cruel in a lot of ways so you do genuinely feel sorry uh, for these characters by the end given their situation but I do actually think that is a positive of the film I think it's justified in the way it tells the story and to me some of their reactions do just feel realistic uh, to how they might be feeling in the, in these final moments. So again, that's that's it's kind of a positive for me on this film, to be honest. You know, Saw didn't set out to be a family-friendly film. It, it meant to be a dark, nasty film, and it achieved that. But I don't think it was a fair to sort of attribute that to the, to the torture porn and just being there um, to disgust audiences. I really don't think at all that was the intention of the film. And of course, building this very intriguing villain with Jigsaw, played by Tobin Bell. And this is a character that I think, at the time to me, this whole concept felt quite fresh. I don't know if I just hadn't seen older movies that obviously G that um, Saw took inspiration from, but kind of having the idea of this killer who wasn't just out for blood and to, just to kill people for uh, his own sick enjoyment. He was actually someone who was... It was like his way of rehabilitation. He wanted these characters to face a life or death situation which would make them question some of the ways they've chosen to live their lives and some of the morals that he talks about, like not appreciating life and abusing yourself and other people. And he wants to teach these people lessons by putting them, putting them through these ordeals. And I've always found that quite intriguing. I think most of my problems with this just come down to some of the consistency in Jigsaw's philosophy and worldview. And I do think that's where you start to get into some of the problems with the writing in this movie, which we'll get into. But I still think as a character, I think Tobin Bell, obviously we only get a limited amount of screen time for him uh, in this one, but 
He's a very interesting character and the actor just plays it extremely well. He is a little bit chilling, just something about his voice and the way he delivers lines. He's just, yeah, there's a reason why everybody loves Tobin Bell and his performance as Jigsaw and he was a, he was a, great, um, a great person to play this villain. So I did think they set him up quite nicely in this first film. But as I said, getting into some of the problems now, some of the worldview and the philosophy of Jigsaw has always troubled me a bit, especially when you get into a lot of the sequels. And I always thought in the later films it was more of a problem, but it's definitely prevalent here as well, because during this film they reiterate a number of times uh, from Jigsaw himself as well about how he's not technically a serial killer because he doesn't kill people and they kind of establish this thing with his character where he's... He's only doing this to people who he believes deserve to be in this situation. But there's a number of scenarios where I don't really understand why he's put these characters in this situation. So if you take Dr. Gordon's game and his um, his uh, plot where he needs to kill Adam. So his family are basically taken captive by somebody else who is also in that game. And... The fact that that guy, that if God, uh, Dr. Gordon fails his test, that Zepp is going to have to kill uh, Dr. Gordon's wife and child, I don't really understand how that is in keeping with Jigsaw's philosophy on kind of punishment. To me, that just has never really felt consistent with the way he tries to set us up and show us his worldview. And... I also feel like that little bit with the two detectives, you know, when they almost get onto him and they kind of catch him in his workshop and and he set up this trap that one of them is killed by. You could just call that kind of, you know, collateral damage and like for the greater good of this bigger, the bigger picture that he's setting up here. But even still, I just feel like there's an element of preachiness to me now when I watch this about Jigsaw where He's saying that he's doing things to people who he believes deserve to be in this situation. But I really do have a lot of questions uh, about the way that he does that. And I, and I think this really comes down to inconsistent writing here in this first film, unfortunately. Even just down to the actual story as well, I think is is a little bit riddled with plot holes. Like with Adam's character, I never really understand, to be honest, what his game actually is. You know, that... OK, he has the saw, he can cut off his foot and potentially escape, but they don't really establish to us that that door, the kind of the sliding door, is actually unlocked at any point. And even if they had cut off their feet by this point, how would they open it? Obviously, when Dr. Gordon escapes at the end, the door has already been opened because he's already passed the time and Zepp is there to deliver the final, uh, the kind of final rulings of the game. Uh, but until that point, I don't really understand what Adam was supposed to do. Was he supposed to cut off his foot and just find a way to escape? Or is it that he only has to survive being killed, or sorry, survive not being killed by Dr. Gordon by the end of this time? Uh, I don't know. So to me, Adam's storyline has always kind of confused me a little bit of what the objective of that actually is. And again, the fact that he's left that key on him in the bath at the start... What is the purpose of that? Like, he wakes up in a bath in water, submerged in water. He gets up and obviously this key is sucked straight down the drain hole. And what was the point of that? That wasn't really challenging to him to any kind of game. It was just pure bad luck that that happened. You know, is it that if it hadn't have happened, he could have just taken the key out and unlocked himself and just walked away um, without doing anything? I don't. I just don't really understand that there. And And to me, it does feel like not enough of this story has been properly explained so for those I mean I'm not someone that typically likes to sit there kind of pinpointing little plot holes and picking it apart like that I don't like to do that like some people do but I think even still with this there's enough things to what to where you're like come on that that actually did need a little bit more explanation again with Zepp's whole story arc and his involvement in Jigsaw's game to me, it doesn't really feel like his particular game that he's been given is really in fitting with Jigsaw's kind of morality and worldview. The fact that they don't establish at all why he's been put in this game or why Jigsaw's deemed it necessary for him to be put uh, within as a victim of this game. And what he has to do in order to get out of it, to me, feels overly cruel. And not in a way that just from like a... Uh, 
a horrible aspect of what one might have to do to themselves but I just feel like it just doesn't feel like him having to kill two innocent people to escape the game it's like I don't really understand what Jigsaw thinks he's supposed to get from that why that would rehabilitate him as a person I just that to me has never really worked and again it's something that you don't necessarily when you're watching this and you're watching it unfold you don't necessarily notice these sort of problems but for me now watching it with Zepp's character I'm just like it just isn't in fitting with Jigsaw's worldview, even in this first film. And, he, and when you start to see more about this character of Jigsaw in the later films, and he fleshes out even further what he's really about, why he does what he does, this first film and his story starts to make even less sense. So there's things about it now like that, that I just simply can't ignore when I'm watching this. There's definitely some things that do feel amateurish, I guess, about Saw uh, when kind of critiquing this film. Like if you look at a lot of the games that Jigsaw set up for people and the way they play out, they uh, James Wang used this kind of technique where it kind of zooms through it at a really fast editing pace and it kind of feels like you're watching uh, like a, me a rock or metal music video from the 2000s. So it's little things like that to me which make the film feel a little bit more dated, a little bit more amateurish. So there's certain things like that now that start to bother me, I think. Uh, and there's just various things like that. Some of the scenes and the way they play out at times can just feel a little bit cheesy to me, I guess. And that's not really something you want when you're going for a very grounded uh, story, especially one that is taking itself quite seriously. <laughs> So that's really all my thoughts that I have for you on this original Saw. As I said, it's been an interesting one to go back and revisit, being a film that in my youth I absolutely loved, uh, and now is one that I can definitely see more of the problems with. It, it is interesting, you know, films will resonate with us differently through different phases of life, and, you know, sometimes there's movies where you're willing to overlook the flaws because of the things that, it's done, that it does well, and other times you just can't, and it, and it ends up ruining the experience. So it can be interesting to revisit certain films at different periods of your life for that reason. But overall, still a film that I have really enjoyed re-watching. It's still a good film, I would say, and I'll give this a 3.5 out of 5. So please do let me know down in the comments what you think of the original Saw and how this film has aged for you. Thanks a lot for watching this review and I'll see you next time.